We begin this morning on Verdict Watch. It's day two of jury del deliberations get underway in the Ahmad Arbery trial. Three men are charged in his death. Self-defense claims and Georgia's former citizen's arrest law are central to the case. Let's bring in trial attorney Matthew Barhoma to talk about how these issues may factor into the jury's decision. Good morning, my friend. Let's start with the last argument we heard from the prosecution, which was, quote, you can't claim self-defense if you are the unjustified aggressor. What do you make of that statement? <laughs> you know, it's a good statement. It's a very good statement to leave the jury with. That's exactly how you want to frame it for them and how you want them to see it. Uh, but ultimately, you know, this whole case is about that aggression um, and whether that aggression really existed. So uh, that's for the jury to, to, to let us know how they found it. Where do you feel this is headed in terms of a verdict? Oh, that's that's a good question. And, you know, ultimately, the jury has the ultimate task here. Um, they have to look at three major cases, three different cases. And I think that this jury might separate the defendants. They may they may convict um, two defendants um, and leave out uh, Mr. Williams. Or if they do, if they do uh, convict him, they might convict him on lesser included offenses. And there is a big back and forth between the attorneys about how much he was actually acting in furtherance of a common of a common plan. Yeah, how does the fact that there are three defendants here make the jury's task so much more difficult? Yeah, you know, sometimes it can make it much more difficult and it can make it much more easier. Um, and in this case, you know, uh, we'll see how long they deliberate. They, they just went off yesterday. Uh, but ultimately, um, you know, they, they, there's three different factors, three very, you know, major uh, uh, um, actors that they got to assess. And for each of those actors, there's, you know, specific conduct that's alleged. Um, and uh, what this jury has to do is they have to line up exactly these facts, exactly these acts, with what they think they should be convicted of. How do they handle the citizen's arrest argument here now that that is off the books? And, of course, the self-defense portion of this is critical. What do you make of the case as it's been presented? Um, listen, I think it was um, it was well, um, you know, uh, 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 defended on both sides. I think it was well lawyered on both sides. Uh, e each side, uh, you know, went went uh, all the way in on on making sure that their their side was well articulated. But ultimately, um, you know, I, I think that um, that that law is 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 well at play. Um, and I, I think both sides have really grappled with how to define it for each, uh, for the jury members. And I think that it's going to be a struggle. I think that that's actually the biggest struggle that this jury probably has to deal with. So we talked about the final closing argument from the prosecution, but the defense left us with this rather bizarre um, picture that they painted of dirty toenails. What does that do to a jury when that's your lasting impression? Yeah, you know, um, that, I think that comment was completely out of line, and um, it's been controversial all over the place. Um, and I, I think you may alienate the jury. You don't want to dirty up the victim. This is someone who's not here to defend himself, um, and you certainly don't want to do that. So I, I think that it was left field, and I think the jury will see it as such. A lot of people want to lop this together with the Kyle Rittenhouse trial and, of course, that verdict. How different are they from an evidentiary standpoint? Yeah, you know, um, I think that the evidence is actually truly different here. And I think that the charges that are brought here are much more on point than in that case. Do I think that the two um, are interrelated in some in some odd way? I actually do. Um, others don't, actually. So keep that in mind. Uh, but ultimately, you know, I think that it, um, depending on how this verdict comes out, if they are found um, guilty or not guilty, there is going to be a message that's sent generally about self-defense is it uh, as little as, as Rittenhouse or is it as much as what we find here and I think that there you know we're, we're going to experience that as this verdict comes out and a message sent how difficult is it for a jury to not put that into consideration and how often do judges say let's let's stick to the evidence and not the message this potentially sends yeah, I know. And we do our fair share of trying to protect this juror, right? Um, you see this judge trying to, to go into the deliberation room just to see, do they hear the protests outside, right? We do our fair share of making sure that this is, you know, uh, not prejudicial and it's, uh, you know, as fair of a process as possible. And this jury just has to focus on these subset of facts. They don't have to focus on the message that it sends. That's for the process to take its play. And finally, a yes or no, do we get a verdict today? No. No. Story. I think we need...
I think we need more time. It could be, it could come, you know, around really quickly, but I think this jury might need more time. All right, trial attorney Matthew Barhoma, love to have you back once we have that verdict. Thanks for your analysis. Always a pleasure. Good to see you. Thank you so much. Happy Thanksgiving. You too.